So just quickly in terms of what we're doing, Wealth Migrate is effectively a concept that we put together. It actually started out in October 2008. I told you that the property market in England crashed and uh, basically what happened, there were 86 South Africans that invested in a property opportunity in Wimbledon. Unfortunately for me, it's not in Wimbledon because it's a 20 minute walk from Wimbledon station, which means it's not in Wimbledon. Again, people buying without getting the knowledge. But the problem was is that they bought for 320 and we could pick them up for 160. They were all fully built, they were fully tenanted with a great net yield. And basically all I needed was a cool, calm, collector, 10 million pounds to take advantage of the opportunity. <laughs> I'm not joking. If we'd bought those properties back then, today we would have bought them for about 160. They've never recovered to 320 unfortunately for the South Africans, um, they're about 270 now. So we've had great growth of 160, and the net yield was about 12%, which kind of just stayed in that, in that range, basically. So can we agree that if we'd had 10 million pounds, it would have been a great opportunity to take advantage of? Yes, no? Yep. So we went about, I decided, right, I'm not going to miss the boat the second time. So we went about trying to set up a structure. In 2009, the middle of 2009, uh, two gentlemen, Henny and Peter, got hold of me and they came along and they said, listen, you know, we're interested in uh, doing you know, offshore property investment. We've actually been doing it for a while already and we, we would like to do it at a, at a larger scale. And the more we talked, the more we realized we'd been doing pretty much the same thing for the last year or so. So we decided to, 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 join, uh, to join together and we effectively created Wealth Migrate. And, uh, and, and then really, I was, uh, we, we, you know, we've done a lot of investment, Henny has done a lot of investment in Australia and what's happening in terms of the international markets there. But I actually got back from, when, in, uh, in April, when I went with Neil and Brendan, and I phoned Henny from New York, and I was like, dude, we're in the wrong country. Because, don't get me wrong, there's good opportunity in Australia, but there's just better opportunity in America right now. And so really Henny came over with me in August and Brendan and, and the three of us went over. As you know, Brendan's been investing in, in America. And we effectively created and got Wealth Migrate going. And the principle behind Wealth Migrate is effectively creating global wealth. It's a balance between technology and nature's laws. It's why we use the birds. I've already told you that one bird flying in a flock can fly 70% further than a bird flying on its own. To tell you what we're not, we are not a fund and we are not a syndication. Why are we not a fund? A fund, objective of a fund is to get as much money under management as possible, or assets, and then earn my 2% every year, right or wrong? Right or wrong? Okay. Now, so growth point, I had a, a fierce debate with a, with a financial planner about growth point. Okay. And I'm not saying anything good or bad about growth point, I'm purely talking about results last year. Growth point last year, their share price in the last three years has grown 100%. Happy? Last year on their balance sheet, they lost 564 million rand in net asset value. And yet the shareholders, partners, directors have 36 million rand in, in commissions, fees, whatever you want to call it. Now, for me, I don't understand because if the net asset value of, of whether it's a company or a property is decreasing, it's only a matter of time until the share price decreases, right or wrong. And yet they still made 36 million rand. On the other hand, a syndication like, like ShareMax, they took 26% off the top. So you gave them 100 Rand. They said, thank you very much. I'll take 26 Rand and I'll invest 74 Rand for you. That's exactly what happened. A company like Blue Zone bought a piece of land for a million Rand. They put it in a big complicated structure and they syndicated it and sold it to you for 100 million Rand. Anything I'm saying, does anyone disagree with me? So what we created was, was a, a completely different concept. It's called crowdfunding. And basically, there's, there's a number of principles. Firstly, there are no fees. There are no fees in the front. There are no fees in the middle. There are no fees. Secondly, our interests are completely aligned. We are investors ourselves. Our US green dollar is the same color and treated in the same way as your US green dollar. How do we make our money? We basically have a hurdle rate performance factor. So on the, on the income plan, it's 8%. On the growth plan, it's 11%. So if we make you 11%, the first 11% goes to the investor. Now remember, the investor is you, but it's also me. My money is being treated exactly the same way as you. After the 11%, we share 50-50 in the upside. So for all the effort and putting all the experience and everything else, we benefit. But we only benefit after you've benefited. Is that fair? Now, if we make 10%, how much money do we get paid? 
zero, zip, nix, nothing, zero. And I think one of the biggest points is the transparency. So I've shown you the, the birds. Just quickly in terms of crowdfunding, who's heard of crowdfunding here? What is crowdfunding? It's pooling resources. Pooling resources, yeah? Okay, perfect. What is the difference between crowdfunding and syndication? Syndication, they, they take the fees first and then they only invest with the balance. Now the reason why the syndication model all over the world has fallen over is because the capital growth stopped. And it was easy to hide things when you, know, you bought it for 10 bucks and it became 20 bucks and they made lots of fees in the process and everyone thought they were quite clever. But when the property market stopped, Henny's uh, business partner, Peter's got a beautiful saying. He says, even a turkey can fly in a hurricane. Anyone not understand that? Anyway. Um, <laughs> so that's the difference. And just as my interest with crowdfunding, crowdfunding basically will go, and this is according to Forbes magazine, will go as high as 500 billion in, 20, uh, in 2013, compared to 1.5 billion in 2011 and 3 billion in 2012. Interestingly enough, and this is a very bad slide, but it's Deloitte's and it's the top 10 trends that are going to affect the marketplace in 2013. This is all, uh, I can send this all to you if you're interested. And uh, one of them is crowdfunding portals bring back the bucks. Crowdfunding portals will raise 3 billion globally, a 100% increase on 2011. Now, just as a matter of interest, two things that are important there. One is, this trend is going to change the world. If you learn nothing else from today, remember that. If anyone here is in banking, unless you change the way you operate, you will be destroyed. I mean that. Because who here likes their bank? <laughs> you do. He likes his bank a little bit. My point is if someone could bring, if you're driving an ox wagon and someone brings you a Ford motor car, do you want the Ford motor car? It's going to change the world, I guarantee it. The second thing. Is this similar to um, uh, cooperatives? Like cooperative, it doesn't fall under the cooperatives. It doesn't fall on anything in South Africa. And I was about to tell you that. It, it, it is a, it's similar to a stock file cooperative in terms of mindset. But the, but this, the beauty is here is that can we agree today we've, that, we've, that certainly America is something of interest to look at in terms of the world markets? Yes, no? Which country was the first country to be forward thinking and adopt technology and to put crowdfunding into legislation in the world? Which one? South Africa. South Africa. In terms of Yeah, but not with technology. It's America. It's America. And interesting enough, I just heard three days ago that England has just passed legislation as well. So the beauty we've got, and it's just, it's, it's literally like an opportunity unprecedented. It's the right market with the right legislation from a technology point of view to take advantage. So just in, in conclusion, you know, what we basically provide is access to global opportunities, the property the investment expertise, simplicity in terms of the comp of complication, huge risk reduction. I learned something from Henny, he said, I would rather own 10% of 10 buildings than 100% of one building. And lastly, it, it provides a lower barrier to entry in terms of, of, in terms of getting involved. So just in terms of the structure, at the moment, we primarily focus on residential. We can explain to you after T why, but we've got the income and the growth and then we've got commercial, and I should actually put another little arm out here because our intention very soon is to have commercial Australia as well. But just to give you an idea, this property on the income plan, it's a five year, it's a buy and hold for five years. Capital is tied up for five years. This is an example in New York. It's a 12 residential apartments, two commercial, sorry, three commercial apartments, $1.4 million transaction, 14% net yield. You can get bank financing at 4.5% fixed for 10 years. And as, just in terms of location, that's the World Trade Center, a million square, a million square feet of, uh, of office space and 500,000 square feet of retail, and we three stops. And then the growth plan, it's more of an aggressive plan. It's a two-year hold where we're basically going in aggressively, we're buying the houses, we're renovating them, and we're selling them into the local market. 
So really, it just, uh, just gives you different options. If you are interested, come and speak to me. Um, we'll fill in an expression of interest form. The one thing I would say is uh, the income plan, we don't take your money at the moment. I learned uh, personally in London where you, know, you put money in, my, in, in a bank account and then every month you phone me up and say, have you bought a property yet? Have you bought a property yet? And that's a horrible pressure because we want to buy good assets, not be forced to buy shit. Sorry. Yeah, makes sense? So the income is more a case of you tell us if you're interested and then we go and find good assets. On the growth, we literally sat with Ian Scott. Ian Scott is the managing partner of Grant Thornton. Anyone heard of Grant Thornton? Yeah, top five accounting firm. They are equity partners in Wealth Migrate. They've invested their money personally in Wealth Migrate. They fulfill three things. They're doing the, track, the tax, the structuring, and the compliance. At the end of the day, Henny, myself, Brendan, we like property. We're good at finding property deals. They're the guys that look after you know, making sure that all the, the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Now, Henny and, uh, and, uh, and Ian sat down on Monday because we've pretty much finalized the, the final first tranche, and they just, the lawyers literally were instructed on Tuesday to fill up the uh, contracts. If you are keen, there is a possibility, I think, Brendan, of sneaking in the back door. But literally in the next week or so, we're pulling the trigger and, and getting going. Now, that doesn't mean it stops. There'll be further in the future, but at least you know about it.